king alpha male. Danny B, Dan Bozarian. All the time, I'd be jet skiing, I'd be driving around in Ferraris and private jets. You're living like a, a life that doesn't even seem real. From multimillionaire to broke, what is going on with Dan Bilzerian? Is his empire collapsing or did it collapse already? Let's dive deeper into his story and figure out what is going on. Dan Bilzerian, known for his extravagant lifestyle and social media presence, has had a series of notable developments in recent times. Let's start with Dan Bilzerian's cannabis company Ignite. Dan found Ignite in 2017 in Ontario, Canada, and started selling cannabis in the U.S. in 2018. The company makes a variety of CPG products from cannabis to CBD products like gummies to topicals to pet drops. The brand also sells vodka and tequila and has an apparel line as well as an energy drink brand called Zero. In 2019, Ignite reported about $50 million in losses that some blamed on the extravagant lifestyle that Bilzerian appears to live. Dan is known on social media platforms for his lifestyle posts featuring scantily clad models, firearms, over-the-top parties, celebrities, and luxurious travel destinations. Dan Bilzerian took Ignite Public at a price of $2.50 per share back in January 2019, a time that Dan's career was skyrocketing. His Instagram was gaining around 400,000 followers per month, and he was living in a $60 million mansion. Till here everything looks fine for Dan because till this point, everyone believed that Dan's lifestyle was real. But that would be until July 2020, when Ignite's former president, Curtis Heffernan, sued the company in a whistleblower retaliation lawsuit in 2020, claiming that he was fired when he refused to approve Bilzerian's lavish personal expenses on the company's budget. In the complaint, Heffernan's lawyer, Tamara Fries, said that he, Bilzerian, traveled the world with a harem of models that would make Hugh Hefner jealous, expecting that the company would cover it all. However, an outside auditor flagged the models and nearly $1 million of the company's money as suspicious expenses such as lavish trips and a $18,000 liquor tab for a Valentine's Day party. Bilzerian expected the company to quickly rubber stamp them as business expenses. And when Mr. Heffernan refused to do that and participate in financial fraud, they fired him. Further, Forbes published an article with the title, Dan Bilzerian is a renter and someone else pays his credit card bills. Moving on, the article stated that, the lease on his home in the ritzy Los Angeles Hills, for example, is $200,000 a month. Dan Bilzerian does not pay this rent. The house and everything else, the models, the flights, the yachts, etc., is charged to the corporate tab of Ignite International LTD, paying a whooping total of $2.4 million annual rent and paying for everything else Dan Bilzerian does would be one explanation for how Ignite managed to lose the reported $50 million that we mentioned above, as Forbes.com first reported, with a different Ignite employee stating that Ignite pays for everything, one said. Models, events, yachts. Dan would just have it wrapped with the Ignite logo, and all of a sudden it was an Ignite expense, and he would send them the bill. Pools, trampolines, the employee added, his personal events that had nothing to do with the business. Dan responded with a tweet from his Twitter account saying, some journalists said Ignite was funding my life. I've been going hard for 10 years and been famous for going hard for seven. I started Ignite two years ago, raised around 100 million, and I own the majority of the company. Despite his arrogant response, which did not discredit anything, especially the company's horrible financial reports. Dan spent a total of $69 million in his first year of business, offset by only $9.7 million in sales. The lawsuit previously mentioned revealed just how horribly this money was spent. The price of Ignite stock fell by about 90% in October 2020, from $2.50 to a low of 28 cents. As various media began to report on Dan's losses, he again responded with a tweet, Uber is worth 80 billion, it has never had a profitable month since it started, and it lost over 5 billion in one quarter last year. Then a follower of Dan replied to his tweet saying that, I just hope they don't put all that money into some $200,000 a month mansion using shareholders' money. That'd be very bad money management. 
He notoriously replied to the follower, I know 200k is probably a lot to a peasant like you, but I flipped a quarter with a buddy for 6 million. If we try to explore more on the Ignite LTD, we can see that it looks more like an artificial company. Ignite had an fan base, or better to refer as an audience, only thanks to Dan. In addition, the whole mega rich guy on Instagram thing was cool in 2014, but by 2020 everyone knew it was complete nonsense, which started to reflect in Dan's Instagram statistics. In May 2020, Dan almost completely stopped posting to Instagram and by the end of the year he'd begun to lose followers. In the meantime, the media speculated that he'd soon fall for bankruptcy. Dan's extravagant lifestyle, which as a result of the lawsuit had been exposed as rented, had lost its edge. In the meantime, the famous tabloid Sportskeeda and other media speculated that why Dan Bilzerian's company could be bankrupt two weeks from now, to which Dan again responded by tweeting a skeleton and all the dumb journalists patiently waiting for Ignite to go bankrupt. In that time, Dan was right. Ignite wasn't filing for bankruptcy, but undoubtedly things weren't going well. After a rough 2019 in which the company lost $69 million, in 2020, the company lost another $19.7 million, as per documents filed with the Canadian Securities Exchange. The same year, the media revealed strange details that Paul Bilzerian reportedly running Ignite International behind the scenes, raising questions of legality. In itself, there's nothing illegal for your dad or family members to run your company. But in the case of Dan, it was because Paul was a convicted felon who was legally prohibited from participating in publicly traded companies. In 1989, Paul Bilzerian was convicted of fraud, conspiracy, and making false statements to the Securities and Exchange Commission. He was sentenced to four years in prison where he only served 13 months and was required to pay a $1.5 million fine, leading Dan to pretend in Larry King's show that they weren't that close with each other. No, I do. I talk to him um, probably four or five times a year. Reports allege that Paul Bilzerian has taken a less shadowy role within the company sending thousands of emails between himself and other top executives at Ignite. But at the time, this was only speculation. As we mentioned earlier in this video that Ignite reported a loss of $19.7 million in 2020, but in the fourth quarter of 2020, Ignite actually snuck into the black registering net income of $3.1 million, making Dan to finally use his Twitter account to tweet something good about Ignite Ignite announces a profitable fourth quarter? I guess the press and the d***ing YouTubers were wrong. Shocking. But Forbes explained very well why this happened. For one, Ignite cut costs, slashing a promotional budget by nearly 75%. Pandemics meant fewer parties, and for Ignite, that meant a chance at profit. However, Dan's stock price recovered quickly when the economy started recovering in early 2021, more than quadrupling from 28 cents per share in October 2020 to one point toward 13 in only one year. In the meantime, revenue for 2021 was $78.8 million compared to revenue for 2020 of $16.9 million, which gave confidence to Dan to claim that he would sell Ignite for $2 billion. Do you have a return in your head? that you want to get on it before you'd ever consider selling? Two billion would be nice, because then I get over a billion. But again, Dan was not being realistic about his claim. Even though we mentioned that Ignite stock did recover somewhat, was completely reversed throughout 2022. Owed in part to one particular incident, the SEC is suing Ignite Brands LTE for failing to produce documents as it attempts to pursue an accounting fraud investigation. Ignite wants the investigative subpoena stayed as the criminal authorities conduct a criminal investigation. The SEC argues that just because the company is facing multiple investigations, it can't ask the SEC to stand down. The SEC's case exposed that Ignite confessed it under a criminal investigation. According According to the SEC case, SEC staff have uncovered information indicating that respondent may have filed public financial statements that include false or misleading representations regarding revenues earned and recognized in the company's fiscal year ending December 31, 2020. After the news hit the market, Ignite's stock went to a free fall, making Dan to take the company private and remove it from the stock exchange. 
After two months, Paul Bilzerian gave an interview for MJ Biz Daily stating that he is now serving as an unpaid advisor to his son's company, was speaking on behalf of Ignite because Dan was unavailable to comment. He also stated that there is no reason to have a public company unless you intend to raise capital from public markets, before saying that, though Ignite was publicly traded, about 90% of the company's shares are owned by Dan and friends. Dan probably had bad advisors when he decided to make the company public because this decision didn't bring him any good benefits, only media backlash. Despite this, it was reported in March 2023 that Dan was still refusing to cooperate with governing bodies. With the authorities issuing a statement, Ignite has refused to do an act the court has twice ordered. While Ignite moved to stay the August 12, 2022 order, as explained on February 28, 2023, no stay was granted and, thus to this date, Ignite also failed to comply with that order as well. Ignite has neither moved to stay the February 28, 2023 order, nor has it objected to that order. Dan posted on Ignite's Instagram account a picture with the caption, best-selling vapes in South America, although the very top comment was, bro, I love you, but I never seen anyone smoking that. If we look deeper into the social media of Dan, we can see that posts of Ignite on X, former Twitter, gain roughly 30 likes, and Ignite's TikTok account has just around 4,000 followers. The same can be said about Dan's personal Instagram account, where the sunny days are over and now he is losing more than 100,000 followers per month. This can be also because Dan stated several times that he is writing a book and due to his inactivity, but Dan released the book, but for some reason he failed to come back to Instagram. Dan was invited to Skinny Confidential Podcast, where he gave an updated explanation for why he quit everything. I just don't care. Like, I feel like social media is like a video game I beat like eight years ago, and I'm like, everybody's playing the same game. I'm like tired of playing it. Like, I look at social media like a cancer. Like, to me, I think it's the worst thing to be happening to society. So I just like, it, it just cringe to perpetuate that problem. Dan Bilzerian, who appears to have spent a little too much time with Andrew Tate, is developing Sigma Society, an alpha male website and course. Yeah, it's gonna like teach guys how to be guys, you know, I feel like the, this generation has kind of like lost that. Although there would undoubtedly be a market for such a project, it seems like a desperate, uninspired money grab, which is often always an indication that there is nothing left to give. But the controversy didn't end here for Dan. He got a hit also from GG Poker, where in March 2022, GG Poker removed all references to Bilzerian from its website. GG Poker users noticed something peculiar when they logged into the client. All of Bilzerian's likenesses had been removed, even from the Battle Royale games, which were specifically created with his branding. Rumors started immediately circulating that the king of Instagram had been terminated from his GG contract. This was denied by the leading poker room with a delayed response. His departure followed a series of controversies, including his offensive remarks against poker players with Dan stating on Adam22 podcast that, Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Most poker players are nerds, you know? Like, I don't really <laughs> hang out with that many of them. I don't really want to associate with them. I mean, I shut most of them out of my games. Like, I never let pros in, really. Like, I mean, we had some semi-pros that I take pieces of, but like, I don't know, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, they're just, to me, I mean, yeah, they just like seem like the typical like online troll dude. I mean, like Dan's derogatory comments about professional poker players, whom he called nerds, also hurt his standing in the poker world. These remarks increased his isolation from the poker community and fueled the criticism he faced. That's a shame for Dan that always claimed he made his multi-million dollar fortune by playing professional poker.